G'day again, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab with Tech Quickie number three. Now, this is actually gonna be pretty quick. Uh, I'm gonna focus on just one section of the new ASNZS 4777 part one, that's section 3.6. And it's new from the old standard, completely new. It's all about power sharing devices. Now, if you've never heard of a power sharing device, it's really developed for uh, like apartment buildings, buildings where there are multiple uh, tenants who want to share one roof, one PV system. And uh, there's a, companies who have produced these products. Uh, shout out to Illum with their Soul Share from Melbourne. Um, and there are probably others in the world. But anyway, we wanted to address this in 4777 part one on how to install a system compliant with an IPSD. Now that's the acronym. Uh, so inverter power sharing device, IPSD. Now what do they do? Essentially they share a supplementary supply from IES to multiple electrical installations. So what does that mean? Let's say you've got an apartment building. On the roof, you've got a 40 kilowatt PV system. You've got a 40 kilowatt solar inverter or similar. And uh, then you've got eight apartments. So it shares that energy amongst those eight apartments by switching. But it raises some considerations in terms of safety and uh, backfeed. So that's why we've written this special section on IPSDs. First up, IPSDs can only be utilized with inverters that have been tested to ASNZS 4777 part two. That's the inverter test standard. The IPSD shall have interface protection if the IES is over 30 kVA. So that's interesting. So the 200 kVA limit for um, without requiring interface protection applies for all other systems except for IPSDs. You're, you're back down to 30 kVA uh, without interface protection. It's a requirement that if any one of the distribution boards supplied by the IPSD, so one of those apartments, loses grid connection, then the IPSD must island within two seconds. So it must fulfill the anti-islanding function. Therefore, uh, effectively, all the apartments would lose their supplementary supply. They'll still have power, <laughs> if they did have power from the grid, but they will lose their uh, solar contribution. Now, one of the problems is there's no product standard yet for IPSDs, and thus we've had to come up with some performance requirements included in this standard for 777 part one. Uh, something you're gonna have to consider too is isolation of all those supplementary supplies uh, going to all those units must be adjacent to the IPSD. So you're gonna need a bit of space, especially if you've got 30 apartments. You also need overcurrent protection for fault currents in any direction on those cables. Now, one of the key parts of an IPSD is actually using um, a CT to correctly monitor the um, distribution and sharing of energy and other safety functions. And it's required that those CTs are installed in a manner as to prevent them being opened or removed. So I guess maybe there could be a cable tie and a label. It doesn't say, it just says uh, in a manner to prevent inadvertently opening or removing them. There's also signage requirements for IPSDs. You're gonna to have to have a single line diagram or a system schematic with a minimum size of A3, okay, at the main switchboard because these are complicated setups. You're supplying multiple electrical installations from one PV system. So anyone working on that needs to know what goes where. Uh, so within the switchboard, a warning sign must also be installed to warn against the removal of IPSD sensing devices, such as CTs. So that's it. That's the, the tech quickie on IPSDs. But can I just hold your attention for a moment and give a big plug for Jeff Bragg from uh, the Smart Energy Council. Uh, Jeff Bragg has produced some amazing CPD courses and they focus on including 4777 part one. So check those out and get your CPD points. And also, if you haven't heard about this amazing offer from the Smart Energy Council, they have a program called Smart Installer Program. It's free at the moment to sign up. Now I say at the moment, I think it's going to expire in November, so get in quick. What do you get for free? Oh, you get, I just had a look, 15 of the critical standards for free. Yes, for free. So cost you nothing to join, cost you nothing to get those standards. It was like fill out a form, click, click, click download them. I just did it. So get on board with the Smart Installer program while it's still free. Uh, so thanks for watching <laughs> and show me some love by giving this video a like and, you know, remember to subscribe because then you get notified of new content as soon as it's published. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it.